Welcome to the Take Ladies a Listing Today podcast, where our hosts, Jim Studebaker and Todd Robertson, give you strategies to get you out of the office right now so you can take a new listing today. And now, here's Jim and Todd. Yes, hello, the Take a Listing Today podcast, show number 102 for October. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Studebaker, Todd Robertson over here. And our producer that brought us all the way to show 102, Lisa Gray in the house. Woo! Do you want to talk about our special guest who flew in all the way from Plano, Texas? I'd rather not. So, oh! the show is... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Our special show guest. And I, I, I see that uh, you have finally uh, graduated to having a shirt. Congratulations well, I, on yeah. that. That's he nice. He kidnapped one of our shirts, apparently. Okay. So uh, you didn't have to rent a shirt this week. No, no. Last week, I, I had to take that one back, but I oh, found okay. this one in someone's drawer. <laughs> Did you, just, did you just like tuck the tag in and then return it after the show? Yeah, as a matter of fact, how'd you know? <laughs> nice, excellent. I've heard about that technique. Well, it's great it, to have you back for uh, Cowboy Michael Boyle back yep. with us today. <laughs> Thank you. Director nice. of campaigns. What gets scheduled gets what? What gets scheduled gets done. And you should be. Hey, how's, so, welcome. How's that, before we get started, I just want to ask him really quick. Yes. How is that going? How I know you do a daily training. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I uh, do 30 minutes where we teach branding strategies. It revolves around a realtor's sphere of influence. Uh, the goal is to help you stay top of mind and fresh in your sphere of influence uh, minds. Nothing worse kicking the butt than to find out somebody that uh, you've got a relationship with, bought or sold a piece of real estate in the last six or 12 months, and they didn't even let you know they were in the market for it. So right. we just teach some uh, some things you can do to, to stay active and and just you know stay in touch and build those relationships and oh. hopefully just brand yourself as their realtor of choice. Hmm. So it's been going really well. Add one more thing since we're on it, the three closing guarantee real quick. I know we're jumping, but I mean, that's important because yeah. that, that does yeah. not exist in the industry right now. Right, right, right. And a lot of people ask about that and, and it's mm -hmm. really quite simple. Uh, what we do is we teach our business space system. And if you implement our business space system and for those people that are interested in scheduling a automated postcard campaign to their sphere, um, if if you don't get an extra three transactions within the first 12 months of doing that and implementing the business space system, we will refund those people for their 150 postcards per month. That well, simple. and wow. and important disclaimer, that business space is free. Oh, yeah. So it's not yeah. like you're selling them some system and then making a guarantee. No, we're, off we're of giving it. it to them. You're mm -hmm. giving we're, them yeah. a free system that is unbelievable yeah that and, really turbocharges their sphere is and what it does. I, I truly believe that people are going to do a lot more than three extra transactions if they just follow right. the business space system mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Whether, whether they're using our stuff or not doesn't matter right if they follow the business space system they're bound mm -hmm. to do a lot more than three transactions yeah. in 12 months as a result right. if, if it didn't work the company wouldn't make a guarantee that says if it doesn't work we give you all your money back right because they must have some type of information that says it does and, work and and there's a, a secret benefit, right, that we've talked about on other shows uh, when we had you in months ago, that that actually can help uh, agent build their business to the point they can sell it like an insurance person does yeah. or other people do. Yep. And realtors, mm -hmm. most realtors are not thinking that way, which is pretty incredible. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Those, well, yeah. th thanks for the shout out. I wasn't expecting to do a little plug, but I'm always well, happy to. 40 today, bucks a person <laughs> before you leave. Today's show is on pro productivity, so uh -huh. it made me think of you because... Scheduling a campaign, I mean, there you go. You're in it's the easy. wheel, you're in the wheelhouse of productivity, right? You're increasing productivity if you are scheduling a campaign. And that's one of our most popular things on our site right now because right. of the buzz happening. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's taken off. Yeah. So yeah. it is important to bring that up. Agents get it. They get yep. it. Yeah. So let's talk about that, about how to become a more productive real estate agent. Now think back to today, yesterday, <laughs> last week. <laughs> Back to today, like well, like five minutes ago. Remember? Yeah, I can't go back that far, Jim. <laughs> what happened? I didn't mean Can that I to be go? funny. She's already over there busting out. Can I just go back one minute. How far do I have to go? Um, as I was saying, <laughs> yes. much of your daily activity may be necessary, but some tasks may be keeping you from being the top producing real estate agent machine that you really can be. And I like when you say real estate machine because here's here's what hits my mind. When we talk about someone like a real estate machine, like your sister in Ventura's killing it, that just tells me that's an agent who has systems in place and they're not playing haphazardly. They run their business like a successful small business owner mm -hmm. would. True? Yeah. 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 And some of these methods that we're going to suggest to you might sound a little far-fetched, but they actually work. Let's take, yeah. for instance, Sir Winston Churchill, the former vice, former vice, former prime minister <laughs> of the United <laughs> What's in your cup over Kingdom. <laughs> 
to later to earlier today. <laughs> oh, oh. Think back to a minute ago. She thinks she's funny. <laughs> Wisconsin humor. Think back <laughs> seventy years when, when Winston, Winston Churchill, Churchill was around. Was our <clears throat> vice president. Oh, anyway, he insisted <laughs> that he got twice as much done after napping. He said, "Don't think you'll be doing less work because you sleep during the day." That's a foolish notion held by people who have no imagination. You'll be able to accomplish much more. Well, he was a smart guy. That's yep. why I believe that. Fellow napper geniuses include Leonardo da Vinci, who snoozed for 15 minutes every four hours. President John F. Kennedy made it a habit to doze off every afternoon for now, one to two now, hours. Now, did he doze off or just sneak out of the White House unaccounted for? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this call no, it. No, no. Hey, question... put me down for a nap. I'll see an hour and a half. No, the question is, whose bed was he napping in? Oh. 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 Uh-oh. Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right. So the moral there is go ahead and take a nap, but not before finding out other ways to become more productive. So don't take a nap right this second. So another way to become more productive is to say no to overtime. <laughs> now, back in 2008, the powers that be at Microsoft Japan gave employees five consecutive three-day weekends. This cut operating costs for the company, but it also increased sales. In fact, sales increased per employee 40% over the production from the previous year. Then there's also a study from a construction company wanting to figure out how scheduled overtime impacts their projects. Mm. They found out that working 60 hours or more per week over the course of two months correlated with a significant drop in productivity. I love these kind of studies because uh, I know that the generation I grew up in and have worked as an adult in is was all about putting in as many hours as possible. And that's not necessarily, <laughs> that's not, oh, oh my God, it's finally happening. I have my own show. Hold on, let me come over here. Okay, it's my show now. And um, what I was gonna say was that uh, definitely being productive is important. <laughs> oh, what is happening here? Is, is our 15 what, minutes ooh, up? What? what? I, I feel more what, productive no. now. <laughs> oh, hey. Get back to your spot over there. <laughs> what are you doing over here? I thought maybe it was my own show now. <laughs> what? Now she's going to want her own yeah, show. I feel, I feel like I'm all, alive now. I'm fire. Good morning. Whoa, how's everyone doing? Oh, let's, let's get going here. <laughs> now, let me say something as much fun as we're having. Um, Stephen Covey. Right, and one of the most popular self-help books in our lifetime wrote the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. In the book, he talked about sharpening the ax, which is a story that, that's been around forever, and it ties into what's happening here. So there's the, the old story, the summation is there was a number one lumberjack in the whole world, and he would beat anybody chopping wood. They brought this other guy in, and the guy chopping wood <coughs> would not stop. He would just go straight through. Like a lot of people that say, oh, I'm working till midnight, feel good right. work. Oh my, I'm working. 20 hours a day. The guy he was competing against took a break every hour. And they're like, oh, I'm going to beat this guy bad. Right. So every hour the guy took a break. So the, so the world champion kept going. At the end, the guy that took a break had more. And he went up to him. He goes, how'd you beat me? You were taking a break. He goes, I wasn't taking a break. I was simply taking time out to sharpen my axe. Ah. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's such a great story. Yeah. I love that story. And actually, while you guys were napping, by the way, anybody, <laughs> anybody listening to the show is probably like, why is it silent? What's wrong with my what's wrong with my phone? Why can't I hear? They were napping. Not, not me. Notice the only woman in the room was not napping. We're taking our advice. Right. And right. we have some narcolepsy maybe, right. but you yeah. know, we're gonna try to get some medicine and mm. get a fix, but <laughs> I thought maybe there was carbon monoxide in the room or something, you all just killed over. But well, wait till but, the um, next step. But what, I, what I was saying at that time is, you know, there was, I think it was a generational thing. Uh, people if from the 80s, it was a right. big thing to, you cannot put in enough hours. Right, right. And grind, grind, grind. That idea of, yeah, yeah, grind, grind, grind. And so I think a lot of people that are probably in their 50s and older are still from that generation of, you cannot work enough hours. And it, I love that more studies are coming out showing that's not necessarily true. Right. That uh, balance is better. Studies and, are showing it's And you're it's more better. efficient when you go back fresh. Totally. Right, I mean, right. when I feel like my brain's going to fry, I get up and walk around. Jim has actually caught me doing <laughs> doing yoga <laughs> by my desk. <laughs> I thought maybe you threw your back out. You were trying to realign something. <laughs> He's like, going on there. Is she going to be okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Just 
just walking around for a minute. <laughs> <difference>. Right. <laughs> oh. yeah. So as a real estate agent, you need to be even more cautious of how much time you spend working. Without someone scheduling your work, it's far too easy to keep working until you're doused in the midnight oil. So set your schedule, keeping in mind the aforementioned studies. It might take some time to train yourself to turn off the lights and close the door at a set time each day, but it's imperative if you hope to become a more productive real estate agent. How about one more way to become more productive? Are you ready for this? Let's give them the one more way. Should All we? right. Take more <coughs> breaks. You do that, right? Tom? <coughs> Oh, take, every now and again, sure. So, Lisa, yeah. you're in charge. We're all going to leave now. and <laughs> Take a break. Oh, my show. It's my show again. <laughs> We're taking a break. All right. So, as a real estate agent, you are your own boss. So, it's amazing how many agents actually treat themselves like sweatshop workers. Yeah. If you had a boss, you might be granted by law, depending on what state you're in, a number of breaks from work scattered throughout the day. And, Lisa, to your point, it is interesting because think about that generation that mm -hmm. we grew up in yeah. and that old saying that all of us in this room heard, oh, I was the first one in the office, the last yeah. one to turn the lights out. So that used to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, hey, reward for production, reward for that. It doesn't matter. You were all the way until there. Like, are you doing busy work? Or are you really knocking it up? Well, and it's interesting to watch the younger generation, specifically millennials. I don't I haven't watched people much younger than that, but mm -hmm. how they work. And if any of you have ever been around millennials when they work, you would swear they are doing nothing but screwing around. <laughs> but somehow, magically, they get the work done. They do it very differently. It will appear like a lot of goofing off, a lot of not working time. But I'm my guess is somehow they're getting it done. So my guess is when they get focused, they get focused, they move very fast, and they knock right. it out. So it's it, a very different way of working. Is Megan a millennial? Yeah, she is. Ah, that explains a lot. <laughs> right. Huh. Would you say she, she doesn't watch our show, does she? She doesn't watch the oh, show. Okay. So she's, does she qualify? Megan, if you're watching, if you're yeah. watching, hello. Does she qualify? Like that would be a description for her? That yeah. Just where she gets anything done. <laughs> <laughs> but yet she gets everything done. Is she what does. Saying, she, right? does she does do good. that. Yes. Yes. Yes, so does. there you go. She's got you. She has a secret. We should have had her on as a guest. Oh, oh that's been difficult. It's like uh, try going to the dentist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> she might take our phone call, but she's not, right. being on camera, I don't know. She might go get a spam for a show or something. We need. She's like good that. at that, huh? Yes. Do we have any spam? You were here when we had spam, weren't you? I was here that time. Oh, yeah. that, that was one of our highest. That's rated. why you came back. I we thought we had more spam here. We well, still have spam. All right. Ready? Oh, oh look, look at this. this. Oh, we still have spam. That mm. show was so highly rated. That's what got the contract for another 100 shows, I think. I think you're right. Is this still good? <laughs> Best Buy February 21, 24. Okay, yes, I guess it's all right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. Please don't open it. Start <laughs> That's one of our prizes today. That I hope might, you don't win. Yeah, that might knock us all out. There. All right. So, so here's a, a great stat. Our brains need some rest, according to Meg Selga. <laughs> He's been working on an accent for two hours to get her name right. I, I think it's pronounced no Selig. <laughs> well, there's it's S E L L G. You, Mr. Wordsmith. Uh, that's a, that's How you get Selig out of that? Uh, the correct spelling is S E L I G. Who, well, who's typing this stuff? Todd. No, wait. How, uh, do, you, how do you know there's an I in there? Uh, when who's I on, see who, no I. Who's is that on an first? Invisible I. Is no, I googled saying? it. Oh. <laughs> but the main point is <laughs> the main point is that our brains need rest, so you should. Avoid doing activities that don't rely heavily on prefrontal cortex function, which is the area of your brain you are using when you work, but instead rely on different brain regions. Hmm. That's says a, that's a multiple. I'm screwed. What? Don't yeah. rely on your prefrontal cortex. Boy, you've confused me here. All right. Anyway, they're saying to step away. Don't be using your step pre away. Pre all right. How do you turn off your prefrontal cortex? Get up and move, whether it's a five minute walk or any other physical yeah. activity. A nap, a meditation. Wait, who's the author that said that? Oh, Lisa Gray, maybe? <laughs> Nariola. That's who it is. Oh, she Did I get that right? Them now. She, she makes up most of these names on here anyway. Yeah. Right. Know, right. All right. Stanford okay. researchers have learned that movement makes us more creative and thus more productive. So eat your lunch at the park or even on a bus bench. <laughs> yeah, the bus bench. I uh, might want to skip that. Bus but, uh, <laughs> find a more high end restaurant to maybe. Uh, yeah. On the bus bench, can you have a cardboard sign that just says out to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> 
views of nature and streetscapes relax and rejuvenate. So is the carbon monoxide coming out of the bus when it comes by. Yeah, you should be fine. Your life expectancy will be cut by probably eight to ten years, but outside of that. I think you should ride the bus while you're eating your lunch. Just get on and ride it. So what while. happens when the bus comes? You have to yell at the bus driver and say, I I'm just eating here. I'm not actually getting on the bus. We're good. Or according to last week, you give the bus driver your elevator pitch because the door will probably open. Oh, <laughs> see? Yay, now you're talking. Uh, you, Susie, before uh, you leave, nice. you say, bum, 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 bum. Actually, Next you know, stop. anybody coming up to sit and wait at the bus right. you could give the elevator pitch to as well. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you getting on this bus? No, I'm just eating here. Okay. <laughs> If they're riding the bus, can they buy a house? Hmm. Maybe they're so rich they are because you know, they ride a bus. The bus stops I've seen really are lovely. So right. I can see why <laughs> really people are lovely. want to sit there next to the homeless are those person one, and eat. Are those ones in Wisconsin or in Florida you're talking about? <laughs> Florida. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep, keep us wow. on track, please. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we ever said that. Maybe not. Whether you work remotely or in a brick and mortar brokerage, stop chaining yourself to your desk. Take some naps, take some breaks, and close your office at a specified time each day, and then watch your productivity soar. And watch this. Mm. When you come back out, out of those breaks, make sure that you're refreshed, whether it's a little workout, whether it's a 10 minutes. And I wrote down here, ABC, always be closing. Everybody in this room has friends that someone else bought a house from. They're like, oh, I didn't even know you were in the business. So you've got to tell everybody, right? So all we're doing in this show is trying to help you be more efficient and effective right, at this right. game and help you close more <laughs> transactions. And I would say for people that, if you're one of those people that you do get easily distracted, but you would like to do this, maybe set a timer on mm -hmm. your phone and make sure, you know, okay, I'm gonna take, I mean, really, when you're beyond 15 minutes with a nap, you're gonna start falling into a deeper level of sleep and you're gonna wake up feeling worse. So. Uh, set that 15 minutes, uh, the, the, the timer for 15 minutes, or if you're taking a walk and you know you only want to be gone for 15 or 20 minutes, right. it might be helpful because at That's least you nice know way. you're going to get back on track again. Right. You don't want to all of a sudden yeah, be your whole day goes sideways. Yeah. meeting new friends at the bus stop, and then you never get back to work all day. <laughs> so here we are at the bus stop. Yeah. New friends at the bus stop. Uh, tune in next week. Wow. We're, we'll be talking about how to prospect at the bus stop. Um, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> A new series all about the bus stop. Cow uh, Cowboy, it was a pleasure having you in from Texas. Any final words? And hopefully we see you again in a few months. No, it's always fun when you guys invite me to sit in. I appreciate it. Uh, keep up the good work, and uh, let's keep helping people be more productive out there. Nice. Mike, do you like that shirt? As a matter of fact, no, not really. No, I do, no, I do like it. I do, I do, I do. I kid, I kid. Right. Todd, I got an idea here. All right, let's hear it. Since oh, we no. can't get anybody to answer our phone calls... Oh. Why don't we give Mike a chance to win, to win that shirt? shirt. And I if he gets it. it right, he gets to keep the shirt. If yeah. not, we need it back. It. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the air. I love it. <laughs> On the air. Mike, if you agree, we're going to ask you at the question, and you get a chance right. to take that shirt home to Texas. Please get it right, Mike. Please get it right. <laughs> Mike, we have, we, have something, we have something new for you. you right. And? You were too sharp on the all uh, three ABC guesses, so we have a new contest for you. Uh-oh. Here <laughs> we right. go. I'm going to ask you a question. The answer is in the form of a number. All you have to do is give me the number. If you give me the wrong number, I'll tell you if the correct answer is higher or lower. You have a time Ooh, frame for this, right? I like it. Frame. I like it. There's a time frame, and I'll even do you one better. I won't start the timer until you give me your first answer. All right. Wow. Let's that's see if impressive. I follow this. All right. He's, got a He's already line. lost. He Did you get all that? He doesn't no, even know how to You confused me. Answer. It was my frontal cortex or uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, you might a want question. To check it back in again. <laughs> Lisa, I think it's third. All right. What's the question? You give me the answer. If the answer is not correct, I'll tell you that the answer is either higher than the number you gave me or lower than the number you gave me. And is, you keep guessing. Is it multiple choice or just flat out guessing? Flat no, out just guessing. Guess. It's, okay. It's rapid fire. And it begins right now. Mike, what year was the first Wimbledon championship held? Just throw it out. 1892. Lower. Meaning older, prior to oh lower. My gosh, you said 1892, it's lower. Just okay. 1800. Higher. <laughs> 1850. Higher. Oh boy. 1872. Higher. 1890. Lower. 1880. Oh, By the way, wow. 
Yeah. Oh, you guessed was... 1890 twice. Well, you know, this is a confusing format, actually. <laughs> there, are, there are some more numbers. <laughs> Intentionally, in we, can, we make it confusing. 1877. Oh, that was not going to be my next correct guess. I guarantee it. Answer. Let's still... give him one last try because, I mean, he needs we to go want, home. And we don't want to see that shirt coming on. Lisa, uh, yeah, Lisa know. throw over a podcast share because if he wins, we're going to give him one of these, too. He doesn't even oh, know this I exists. I going to say if he loses, Here's... we're going to make sure we, he puts another shirt on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> Look at this. Mike has a chance to also win this, you guys. Oh, that's a nice one there. You know, and if agents would pick up the car. phone when we call them, they win that. Whoa. Also, I'm just going to say one more thing. If you are an agent listening to the show. Yes. Right. Jot down this number. 855-807-8258. When our show is being recorded, which is... Thursdays, if you go to take a listing today podcast.com, you'll see when the show is being recorded. You can call in. You can phone in, win a shirt, win a gift card, do it. We give out a lot of stuff and we have a lot of fun. So write that number down and, you know, we. 855 807 8258. So the next nice. question from Mike, is the format the same or are we going different here? It's the same format. Oh boy. So if you get this one. So no questions, you just go rapid fire and now you've got a chance to win a shirt, <clears throat> another shirt, and so you don't get hungry on the airplane tomorrow because they don't give you food anymore. A can of Spam. Um, <laughs> hopefully you can share with his row mates, you know. Yeah, they'll appreciate yeah. that. Or, or they'll kick you out of the row. Or you know. go down to the bus stop before you leave town and <laughs> share some that Eat my lunch. There. Okay. Here we go, Mike. Now's the time to kick in your prefrontal cortex. <laughs> Stop walking. Here is your question, Mike. How many taste buds does the average human tongue have? Oh, that's easy. 786. Higher. 1,000. Higher. 2,000. Higher. 2,500. Higher. 10,000. 10,000, yes, that is correct. Are you kidding? I don't believe him. 10,000. <laughs> hey. Oh, yes. oh, I just put a shirt and everything. Thank oh, you. Oh. <laughs> you know, there was a don't mic up the there. No. <laughs> Mike, congratulations. Thank Todd, you. he wins the t-shirt. Oh, he wins the, guys. take a listen today. You can't even buy those in the Lucky stores. Lucky for you guys, I get to keep my shirt on. He can sleep one in that can one. Of, it's a little big. Yep. Spam, there you go, Mike. Congratulations. Congratulations. Don't eat that all in one place. Nice, nice. Yep. If you want a coffee mug, there you go. We'll give you a coffee those. mug. Anything and else we can give you? Now here, you know out, you can now, have the question as now well. Now get out we'll of give here. give you all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we'll see you in a couple months. Okay, geez. All right. See you later. All right. Take Imagine care, you guys. Let me get that done. See you later. Bye-bye.